What's up guys, Damien Keyes here, welcome back to the channel. So releasing covers on YouTube used to be the big game. If you look at Boyce Avenue or Tyler Ward or Postmodern Jukebox, that was the best way of actually getting the organic growth when you are a musician or a band trying to get traction onto YouTube. The problem is the industry has caught up and while done well, a good cover on YouTube can really make or break. It can really build your brand and your organic growth. But done badly, it can result in copyright strikes or potentially even worse. So in today's video, I wanna go into everything you need to know legally to be putting out covers on YouTube. For example, what about demonetization? What's the difference between demonetization and having something blocked? What licenses do you need? And how do you get those licenses? And obviously the big one, which is what exactly is fair use, especially in 2020. So strap yourself in, because this one's gonna be a big one. Nice. So back in the day, which was a Wednesday well before streaming, it was a relatively straightforward process if you wanted to cover someone's song because you would need permission from the owner in order to record that song and put that on a physical piece of content like a CD or vinyl, which then would go out to shops and people would buy it. Ah, those days. But then came along streaming, and then came along YouTube, and all of a sudden, fair use came into play, which is, when are you allowed to use someone's cover, and when aren't you allowed to use someone's cover? That would mean, in order to get permission, you would need a license. So do you need a license to upload a cover of someone else's song on YouTube? Well, technically, the answer is yes. However, quite a lot of artists and labels are pretty cool with you recording covers and putting them on YouTube. But some artists and some labels are not so cool with it. Like very, very, very not cool with it. There are three possibilities that happen when you upload a cover to YouTube. Number one, nothing happens. Either they don't see it or they do see it and they say, hey, you knock yourself out. Have a great time covering our song. It's some extra publicity from us. Have some fun. Number two is it gets claimed, which we'll talk about a bit more. And in which case it becomes demonetized. And number three, it becomes blocked. It becomes removed off YouTube and what was there is all of a sudden not as there as it once was. Demonetize is where the artist or the copyright holder receives the money generated from that content that you would receive. Effectively, what happens is you make the content, but it features someone else's song. Therefore, they make a claim and that takes away some or all of the money that you would have generated and it goes straight to the copyright holder. Now blocked is where the artist or label can say, not only do we not care about the money, even if there is some, but we don't want that on YouTube at all. And so therefore it can have that video removed. So therefore you will get a notification saying, really sorry, but you don't own the material in this video. Therefore it has been blocked. You can then appeal, but also you can get a copyright strike. So what happens if you're not making any money from that cover? Let's say you're a YouTuber who says, I don't have enough subs to monetize my channel. I just wanna make a really great cover to give it to my audience. Does that make a difference? Sadly, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because technically you don't own the material that you used in that piece of content. So the rights holder has every right to stop you doing that, even if you aren't making any money at all. You don't have to make financial gain for that to become something illegal. All you have to do is use somebody else's property. So then it comes down to, will you get caught? And how do you get caught? Which there are several ways. For example, YouTube, as well as every other social media platform, has some automated inbuilt software, a little bit like Shazam, that can match Match up tracks and say, hang on, these are very similar. But let's say you change the tempo, you change the key, maybe you change the melody, you can completely change a lot of the track and then you make it your own. Something like say, postmodern jukebox. Does that make a difference? No, absolutely not, because therefore it is still 
the property of somebody else. So whether you're doing a drum cover and you're playing along to a track or whether you're doing a karaoke track and singing along to it, technically you don't own the rights and it can be claimed. Whether that is automatically or whether that is someone from a company seeing it and putting in a physical copyright claim on your track. So now we are getting into publishing rights instead of recording rights. Rather than saying, I'm just using that track and I'm taking that version of it and playing it, I'm completely recreating it. This is now publishing. Now the difference with this means, even if you change everything, you might change the melody, you might change the production, but it's still the same song. It still means you are in breach because you are using elements of that song. So what comes under these publishing rights? Well, for example, if you use the lyrics, that's a no-no. If you write down the lyrics and put them on the screen, that's a no-no. If you hum the melody, that's a big no-no. So effectively, you can't use someone else's track under any circumstances on YouTube apart from under fair use. The big labels literally hire teams of people to go through YouTube and other social media platforms to find copyright strikes because they know there is a lot of money. Can you imagine out of all of the thousands of uploads on YouTube every single day, can you imagine how many Beatles covers there are? Can you imagine how many Rolling Stones covers there are? Can you imagine how many ACDC covers there are? So therefore, there are teams of people searching them out, giving them copyright strikes. Taylor Swift cover, no. Taylor Swift cover, no. Taylor Swift cover, no. And it's huge business, so labels know that, and therefore they hire teams of people to go searching. So what happens if you want to get a license? Let's say you are doing a cover, not just for YouTube, but you would like to take this across all streaming platforms, so you figure you should probably get a license. Well, in which case, let's talk about music licensing. Am I cool or am I cool? The first license we need to talk about is a mechanical license. The mechanical license is for the audio and this allows the property to be used. So therefore, that means it's stuff like CDs, vinyls, iTunes, ringtones, and also streaming services. But this is where you have the choice of what you choose to listen to. I choose to go and get that CD. I choose to listen to stuff on streaming. Now this is different to radio because that's performance rights. You don't actually choose what you listen to on the radio, even if you choose which radio station you listen to. So the mechanical license is basically covering everything audio that you get to choose that you listen to. Then there's a sync license. Now a sync license is very similar to a mechanical license, but this is where you are syncing the video and the audio. So effectively, if you make a YouTube video where you've got the audio and the video, the sync license comes into play. So once you've made your YouTube video and put it out and it has had a claim, what happens next? Well, technically you were in breach. So the artist or label can take any money that is away from your video for themselves or they can have it removed like we talked about. However, YouTube is full of cover songs. So how have most of those people got away with it? Well, this is where it gets to be a gray area, kind of like my beard. The issue is, over the last 10 years of YouTube, the gray is fading. And the reason for that is because the industry is catching up faster and faster. Not only is technology catching up, but they're hiring people to come and find and take what is rightfully theirs. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, fair use. Fair use is where someone can take someone else's content and they can use it under certain conditions. But the problem with this is fair use only comes into play once you have already had a claim against you. It's very similar to copyright. I don't know if you know this, but as soon as you have written something, it has copyright. But that's not the issue. Having copyright and proving copyright are two very different things. So when someone puts a claim against you, you have to prove that you haven't done anything wrong. And that is where fair use comes into play. 
And the issue with this is it's subjective. So it could go to court and one judge might find it fair use whilst another judge might find it not fair use. So if you know the YouTuber Rick Beato, one of my favorite YouTubers, and he goes through this all of the time because he is an educator. And as he puts it, how are you supposed to educate without examples of historic music to bring it to life? But if Rick is demonstrating a scale or a certain feel, and then he brings an example from a track in, that is education and that is 100% fair use. The problem with this is YouTube can't tell the difference between fair use and not fair use. So YouTube will just be binary code saying you can't do that, therefore you get a claim or you get a copyright strike. And even if it's a person who's made that copyright knowing it's fair use, it still means that you, the content creator, needs to appeal. And the problem with that is that's a scary process to actually appeal against a huge artist or a huge label. So most people don't. Most people just let it go by the way and allow that money to drift off to that label or potentially to even let that track get blocked. So there's a few things that you need to know if you are going to make covers moving forward, especially on YouTube, because it's a very different game than it used to be three or four years ago. Number one is if you get a claim, you can appeal without any extra penalty. But if you get three claims within 90 days, then that could result in your entire channel being taken down. When it comes to how much you use of someone else's song, that doesn't matter, whether it's one second or one hour. All that matters is, can you claim fair use? Because if you can't, you have breached the copyright rules. And also, if you credit the artist that you've taken it from, that still doesn't matter. In fact, it kind of makes it worse because if you're actually crediting the artist, you're actually admitting guilt and saying, yes, I did do this, so that there's no way that you can stand up in court and say, I didn't know. So it doesn't matter how much you credit, you still can't use other people's material. So the million dollar question is, how do you get hold of these licenses? Well, there are plenty of companies who are there to help you. Like for example, the Harry Fox Agency or Louder, L-O-U-D-R, or also Easy Song Licensing. Or on top of that, there are other websites like We Are The Hits. But on top of those, you can also get in contact with publishers and do this yourself. And yes, it takes a little bit more of legwork, but there's no reason why you can't contact publishers yourself. I think whilst a lot of that is the technical information, I would say one thing that is for sure is YouTube is now being clamped down on. We have had 10 years of the Wild West. And it's not that it's not fair, but what's actually happened is the industry hadn't caught up. Now it has a way of catching up and YouTube is big, big business. And the labels and the publishing companies know this, which is why they are out for blood. So if you are gonna do a cover, then make sure that you have done your due diligence. Make sure you know that it isn't gonna have that copyright strike. Make sure that you can use this cover and make sure you can use it in a way that will bring value to your audience so that you're not having to go through all of that for the sake of nothing. Also remember that every single country in the world has slightly different rules on this. So depending on where you are in the world also depends on the rules of the game. So you need to check in the country that you are already in. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you won't get any copyright strikes because they're an absolute pain in the bum. But if you can do me a favor, like, subscribe, or if you're looking for more in-depth courses or access to me, then there is my Music Business Academy, DK-MBA, where you get a 14 day free trial. So what have you got to lose? Otherwise, just come and be a part of this community because I'm so proud of watching you guys grow. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.